Your main event, Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli versus Ortiz and Eddie Kingston. So it's funny because they spent several minutes at the start of this match with Danielson and Eddie just posing for the crowd to see who get bigger cheers. And uh, it was definitely split, and there was a lot of passion on both sides. I think Danielson was actually the favorite on this particular evening. Hmm. But they just posed and posed and taunted and posed and appealed and posed and appealed and taunted and posed. And then they said, well, that's done, and they just beat the absolute holy hell out of each other. <laughs> yes, it started off as sports entertainment and then uh, ended in a murder. It wasn't even that. It started off as cheerleading. That's fair. <laughs> then then yeah. you're, you're correct about the murder, that's for sure. And eventually they cut Ortiz off so they could murder him. Uh, they're, they're beating him up, beating him up. There's a point where he's craw he's crawling for a tag and uh, that, like jumps into Claudio's arms trying to reach over his back and Claudio turns that into the giant swing which is quite great. And then a bunch of weird stuff happens because during this match, which is the main event and theoretically important with big stars, they begin to, uh, to announce a lot of things that suddenly all seem more important than this here tag match with no stakes in the line. First of all, the rankings are returning. Oh, my God. Mm. Now, before I get to the rankings, I want to say that uh, the other thing that happened is near the end, there was a big spot, an important turning point in the match where Claudio illegally crotched Eddie on the ropes behind the referee's back, which directly led to the finish, I might add. And none of the announcers called any attention to it whatsoever because they were busy announcing Adam Copeland versus Minoru Suzuki, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I requested we need to know more lineups in advance. I've been saying this forever. You know, no show should go off the air with no matches announced for the following week. But I do think that you should do what Raw and SmackDown do which is before the main event, you list all the matches for the next week. And I don't know if this is why they stopped doing it, but you remember everyone used to make fun of like how Excalibur had to read, you know, 74 matches in 60 seconds or whatever, and he would just like, you know, go wild. Well, you know, it was ridiculous that he had to do 70 matches in 60 seconds. It wasn't ridiculous that he had to read out 70 matches. So part of me thinks that People making fun of it led to Tony not doing it anymore. You need to announce your matches in advance for the television audience, for the people buying tickets, for the people that want to go to your show. They need to know what's coming up. And you need a, a specific segment in which you announce those matches. I think he was afraid that, uh, you know, we, uh, I don't want people turning the channel, so let's, 60 seconds, you got to list off all these matches, and it just became ridiculous. Let it breathe. No one's going to turn off the show if they like it. You've got to, you know, whatever. So now they are announcing matches in advance, but they're doing it in the middle of matches. It's like they literally announced a match during a pivotal part of the match, which caused the announcers to not talk about what was happening in the match. So, yes, please announce matches in advance, not in the middle of matches, especially main event matches. They like to do this. They like to go, we just received word from Tony Khan. The six-man elimination tag will be happening. I get it. You had to, like, in storyline, go to Tony and get it signed. Do that when you come back from a break, not in the middle of a match. Now, these fucking rankings. Mm -hmm. Do you know whose idea it was to get rid of the rankings? Tony's. Punk? I was told it was CM Punk. Okay. He talked hmm. Tony into getting rid of the rankings. Now, Phil and I have not seen eye to eye, apparently, on some things. The heck you say. But this fella is 100% right. <laughs> Kudos to CM Punk. That was the right call. Perhaps he can come back because I have no idea why we are going back to rankings. Because you know the thing with the rankings was? I never liked the rankings in the first place. And I always had to peer people go, oh, you know, people didn't like the rankings. But then, you know, we had these champions defending their, you know, blah, blah. It doesn't mean I want rankings back. It means I want people to win before getting a, a championship match. Okay? You know, you know when they had rankings before what they also had dark and elevation mm. so you had two internet shows 
that were like three hours long each where people just beat jobbers to like pad their records for title shots and such. Both of those shows are gone. How in the world are you going to make rankings work now without those two shows to pad the rankings? I don't have any idea. Why are these coming back? Why? Not only that. <laughs> My memory may be faulty here. But as I recall, when they had rankings, there was the AW World Championship and also the TNT Championship. And you had rankings for one title, and the other was basically an open door, open challenge policy. So that's fine. I believe now, right this second, January 21st, 2024, there is the AEW World title. There is the AEW International title. There is the TNT Championship. There is the Triple Crown representing AEW, New Japan, and Ring of Honor. There is the Ring of Honor TV title. And there's the Ring of Honor Pure Champion. That's not even counting the tag division, the trios division, or the women's division. Are we going to have a top five ranking for every belt? I guess. <sighs> Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work. Anyway. Does this have anything to do with the whole argument with Hook and and Samoa Joe You last know what? Week? It shouldn't because Hook, forget the records... He had one loss in his entire AEW run. He deserves a match with Samoa Joe. It doesn't change putting a graphic on the screen telling us what you told us verbally. Like, I don't know, man. So, I'm thinking about rankings for a while, but eventually I get into this match again. Eddie gets a hot tag against Claudio, who they noted is his forever foe. They will they will fight to the death. Until they, until they are dead, they will be fighting. And he's making his comeback, and there is a great, great point here where Claudio cuts off the comeback by slapping Eddie in the face very, very hard. Bam! And Eddie sells, and he fires back with a slap of his own, which is not nearly as hard, but Claudio sells it more than he sold it, delivering the slap before that. So now totally back into this match, and Ortiz is back, and he's in a lapel lock, he's fighting for his life, and Eddie's crawling to get to him, and Claudio's got him, and it's all super dramatic. And they say, oh, hey, uh, Dynamite, we're getting Adam Copeland versus Minoru Suzuki. <laughs> now, I won't lie, I was not watching Dynamite live or Collision live, so I knew this was going to happen. I didn't catch it totally off guard. But still, when I heard Adam Copeland versus Minoru Suzuki, <laughs> I didn't care anymore about what was going on in this here. Well, that's so bad. Mess. It sure is. It sure is. And I think the only other person who made me react that way was Kevin Kelly, the commentator, who is losing his goddamn mind about Adam Copeland versus Minoru Suzuki, and who can blame him? <laughs> Can't believe this is happening. So, eventually, Danielson pins Ortiz with a knee strike. I think they're making Eddie watch as they beat his friend. And afterwards, Eddie is apologizing to Ortiz for dragging him into this. And Danielson vows that Eddie won't be triple crown champion for long and spits on him. <clears throat> and I thought, man... What Eddie needs here is some more friends. And you know who's his friend from the past? John Moxley. Hmm. Yep, yeah, that was the show. Thought it was a good show. Thought it was a good show. But I there, I do have a couple of qualms, which we mentioned here. It was not a perfect show. Let's just keep everything simple, you know what I mean? Sure. If you, if you want someone to get a title shot, just have them win some matches. And then point out they've been winning matches, and then they get a shot. We don't need rankings. We don't need artificially padding rankings. Like, we don't need to get in our own way. Just keep it simple. Winners get title shots. That's it. If some shithead on Twitter doesn't like it, they can fuck off. They're not booking the show. Tony is booking the show. And he needs to do what he needs to do and not worry bunch of, about a bunch of idiots on the internet, okay? Worry about the people that go to your shows or don't go to your shows. And if people aren't going to your shows in as big a number as they used to, then, you know, the reasons for that are different than the reasons why people bitch on Twitter. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.